Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that the book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our day number, lesson number 29. We are on page number 95. The very first problem on page number 95, number 135, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video and do the problem yourself first, and then we'll do it together. All right, here we go. We are told that we have two people, A and B. We are told that A and B can do a job in X hours. We are also told, we are further told, that A alone can do the same job working at a constant uh, pace and so forth, all those things that they talk about. A alone can do the job in Y hour, obviously the same job. A and B can do it in X hours, A alone takes Y hours to do, to, to do the same job. The question simply is, how long will B take to do the same job by himself? And here are the answer choices, X over X plus Y, Y over X plus Y, X times Y over X plus Y, X times Y over X minus Y, and X times Y over Y minus X. Go ahead and do it yourself. All right, let's see what we can do. All right? We need the room. So we're going to set it up where we have a nice. We're going to set it up where we have a nice juxtaposition of A and B. So here is our Mr. A. Here is our Mr. B. We know A takes Y hour for one job, because we are told that. If A can do Y, if A can do one job in Y hour, if you give him only one hour, if you give him only one hour, he should be able to do one over Y job. Makes sense. If he takes three hours to do a job, in one hour he will do one third of the job. Now instead of one hour, if you give him X hours, instead of one hour, if in one hour he can do this job, if you give him seven hours, he can do seven times the job. Therefore, in x hours, this implies that in x hours, we should be able to do x over y jobs. So far, so good. And also because we are told that working together, this is x hours. Also because we are told that when they are working together, in x hour they can finish the job. Both of them working together. But in x hour we just established that this guy can do only this much job by working by himself. Mr. A is that. Mr. A can do X in X hours only this much job, and in X hours they can finish the job. Therefore, that implies, therefore, what this implies, what this statement implies, therefore, what this implies is that B must be able to do the remaining, remaining, which is, this is how much job X is doing by himself, uh, sorry, this is how much job A is doing by himself in X hours. Therefore, B must be able to do whatever is remaining. 1 minus X over Y job in X hours. Makes sense. And that's where the story is going to begin. That was just what we have done so far. It's just a setup. That's where the story is going to begin. Let's, let's do that. So let's first write this. Let's first write this as y minus x over y job in x hours. So now we're going to start. We're going to pick up from here. So we know now that you can do this much job y minus x over y job in x hours. Now instead of instead of giving him x hours, if you give him three times the hours, instead of giving him x hours, if you give him three times the hours, he should be able to do three times the amount of work. Let's give him y times the hours. Multiply both sides by y. y drops out, and what we find is that he can do y minus x job in x times y. x, y hours. Well, if he can do this much job in x times y hour, if you were to give him y minus x, divide both sides by y minus x, 
In other words, if you can do this much amount of job and say, if you can do two jobs in seven hours, if you, instead of giving him two jobs, if you give him half a job, you get the idea. You divide both sides and we're done. That's it. That's one. That's the answer. In one hour, oh sorry, rather, in one job, you can do one job. This is job. He can do one job in this many hours. That's our answer. We erase the answer twice, but that's what it is. Do you understand? That's all there is. Let's do the next one. It's very difficult for me to resist to try to explain something very simple and when you try to explain something too simple, it gets too tedious and it becomes too boring and, and it's just too much. You get the idea. Number 136. In number 136, we are told that we have two baskets consisting of, how do you spell consist? Con consisting of red balls and blue balls. Let me change the marker. This marker is dying. It's squeezing. It's making noise. So here are the two baskets. Basket one and basket two. Basket one, we are told, has four red marbles and two blue marbles or balls, whatever you like, doesn't matter. And the second basket has three red marbles and five blue marbles. Here's what we're going to do. We are told to pick, pick one ball at random, obviously, from each basket. So far so good. We're going to pick one ball from this basket, one ball from this basket. And here's the question. The question is, what are the odds of picking one red and first I'm going to write it in the wrong way. First I'm going to write it in a way that is not given just so you understand the difference. What are the odds of picking one? What are the odds of picking one red and then one blue? What are the odds of picking one red and then one blue? This one word, this one word Picking, what are the odds of picking one red and then one blue? This is an entirely different question. This is an entirely different question than what is being asked here. What is being asked is simply this. What are the odds of picking one red and one blue? They're not taking pick, what are the odds of picking one red and then one blue? The order doesn't matter. So in other words, we can pick one red from here or here and one, one blue from here or here. What are the odds of doing that? Go ahead and do it yourself. Let's see what we can do. <clears throat> because it does not say what are the odds of picking one red and then one blue, it just says what are the odds of picking one red and one blue, order does not matter. We already established that. Which means we have two possible scenarios. We have two possible scenarios. One is that we pick red and then blue. In other words, pick one red from this basket and a blue from here, or pick blue and then red. Take a, pick a blue from here and red from there. Let's, let's start then. So, what are the odds of picking a red, red ball from the first basket? We have four of them. So it's four out of six. Four out of six. And now we go to this basket here. Now we go to this basket and ask ourselves, we already picked up the red one, what are the odds of picking a blue, blue, bar, blue marble from this basket? We have five blues out of a total of eight. So this is one and this is the or, which means we're going to add up the two probabilities. Now 
we pick a blue one first and then a red one, we're going to pick a blue one from the first basket and a red one from the second basket. What are the odds of picking a blue one from this basket? We only have two blues out of six. Now we pick the red one from this basket. How many reds do we have? We have three of them out of total of eight. Very good, that's our answer. That's all it is. All we have to do is simplify it and we are done. That's a 20. The denominator is the same. 6 times 8 and 6 times 8. So that's a 20. That's a 12. That's, that's a... That's that. Oh, that's a 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times, 4 times 5 is 20. That's a 6. That's a 26. Out of 48. We have to reduce it, obviously. 13 out of 24. The answer is 13 out of 24. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 137. Let's see what 137 has to do. See? In 137, we are being, to we are being told something about this firm that sells shoes uh, in different regions of the country and if with, uh, through different dealers. So here's the story. It's a very simple problem. It's a very childish problem. We are told that we have 403 regions in the country. They are divided up the country into 403 regions. Uh, regions. We are told that we have average of 98 dealers per region. I don't like this thing. I like to have my numbers lined up properly. 403 regions. We, ha we are told that in each region, on average, we have 98 dealers. Average of 98 dealers per region. We are told that average of 2,488 shoes, units, I'm just, just going to call them units because it's easier to write units than pair of shoes, units sold per dealer. And here's the question. Approximately total units sold. And they are looking for approximately. And to make it easier for you, here the answer choice is uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 10 to 4, 10 to 5, 10 to 6, 10 to 7, and 10 to 8. Those are the answer choices. Go ahead, do it yourself. As I said, it's a very straightforward question. Let's take a look at it. Very simple, very straightforward. Since they are asking for approximate, since they are asking for approximate, that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's take this 403 and pretend that it's 400. We're going to approximate. Let's take this 98, pretend this is a 100. Let's take this 2,488 and pretend it is 2,500. That's what we have to do. So there we go. We have a 4 here, we have a 25 here. 4 times 25 is 100. And now we just have to count our zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I six six zeros. There we go. That's our answer. So 6 here, 2 here, 10 raised to 8 is the answer. The answer is 10 raised to 8. Number 38, number 138 is even sillier than this one, even sillier than this one, even simpler than this one. It's a very, very babyish problem. Here we go. And when you find a babyish problem, very simple problem, especially this late in the story, and by that I mean we are already at 138, this late in the story, if you find a simple problem, you can't complain. Take the gift and run. 138. The question is simply this, what's the median of 10, 4, 26, and 16? Go ahead, do it yourself. Very simple, very straightforward problem. In order to find the median, we have to first arrange them. That's the important part. Arrange them in order. So we have a 4, then a 10, then a 16, and then the 26. 
and what we find is that we have even number of numbers. We don't we do not have an odd number of numbers. Had had we had odd number of numbers, median would have been just a middle one, straightforward, simple. Since we have even number of numbers, we simply have to take the average of these two. That's all it is. It's just 26 divided by 2 is 13. Let's do the next one, number 139. Number 139 is the very last problem on the page there. And here is what we have. It's going to require some writing on my part, so be patient. We are told that we have three bags. Three bags, P, Q and R. And these are the total marbles. Total marbles, 37, X, and 32. I have to take my time, make sure I don't make a mistake. And here is the percentage of blue marbles. And we are told that these percentages are not exact. These are to, to the nearest tenth. To the nearest tenth. And here are the percentages. 10.8% 66.7% and 50%. And here's the question. Oh, we are also told, one last thing I forgot almost, we are also told that one third of the total marbles are blue. One third of the total marble are blue. And you can guess probably what the question is. Question simply is what's the value of x? Go ahead, do it yourself. So here we go. One third of the total marbles are blue. I'm going to take care of that first so that we can erase this thing without, so we have room. One third of the total marble. Total marbles we have is 37 plus x plus 32. That's the total. 37 plus x plus 32. 37 plus x plus 32. And we were told that one third of them are blue. So that quantity represents the number of blue marbles. And we can also figure out the number of blue marbles from this column. And then and when once we have done that, all we have to do is equate the two and some sim solve a very simple, straightforward linear equation. Nothing to it at all. Very simple. Let's do it. But the important part to understand here is that you don't end up doing silly things and wasting your time there. Approximate percentages is what is given here. That's what you have to do. You have to be a little bit creative. So we're going to pretend that this is 10%. We're going to pretend this is 10%. I'm going to pretend that this is 40 so if this is 40 and this is 10%, that gives us 4. 66.7, that's 2 third. We have x. So it's 2 third of x in bag Q. In bag R is exactly 50%, which is 16. That's all. Equate the two things. 4 plus 2 third x plus 16. Do you understand? When you're doing your work, when you're doing your work, don't try to be fancy. Do not write two-thirds like this. There is no need to be fancy. It's, it's easier on the eyes. It's easier on the eyes to keep track of the fact that we have a third. We have a three at the bottom here. Let's multiply the whole equation by three. We're going to do it on the top, so we don't have to go so far down in the blackboard. Let's multiply the entire equation by three. So we get 37 plus x plus 32 has to equal 4 times 3 is 12 this gives us 2x 2 times x and this gives us 16 times 3 that's 48 and as long as I have not made any stupid error we should be fine so here we get 2x plus 60 and here we get 69 plus x there you go we are almost there. We are done. I was about to say we are almost there. We are done, of course. Bring the x to this side. x equals 9. 69 minus 60. That's all there is. That was the end of the page. That's where we are going to stop here. We are going to meet again tomorrow. I am going to pick up 
problems from the next page, page number 96, when we meet tomorrow. Alright, bye now.